the who, what, where, when, and why. And so now looking at that, can you say who, who is this about? <coughs> and you can write your answers while we discuss it. John is writing. That's who is writing it. Who is he writing it to? He's writing to believers. the church, the believers, which would be us. So we can say us right there. John is who, and we are who. And then, of course, the Lord. It's, it's all always about him. You can't get away from that. That's just going to be your answer. It's like the Sunday school answer, right? <coughs> little kids, if you've taught Sunday school, what's the answer for everything? <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> so um, that is the who. And then what's the what? What do you see as the what? Any words that answer the question when? And it really makes you dig deeper. Like even now, Cheryl just came up with that. And went, yeah, it does say that from the beginning, what we have heard. It would be the beginning of their time with Jesus. Why is he writing this? We already talked about that. To make our joy complete. Yes. To make our joy complete. One how that I can see in there is how to be, uh, in verse 8, no, verse 9. How are we kept in fellowship with God? Through confession. Okay, so I think one of the hows is how to have fellowship, which is in seven. Mm, okay. And it says, but if we walk in the light mm. as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ the Son cleanses us from all sin. So I and this is why it's fun to do it together. Mm -hmm. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, then, that's an if then clause. If then. If we walk with him as he is in the light, then what? We're going to have fellowship with one another, and it will be healthy fellowship. It will, go ahead, Mary. Oh, right. Let's look at John, the Gospel of John. That's about this far back in my Bible. Okay. So, you go back there to John 1, 1 through 5, to find out who the who is, and this is what we were just talking about. This is the who. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We're going back here to the deity of Christ. I'll tell you why here in just a minute. He was in the beginning with God. Well, we still don't know who He is. But there's something called the Word, a being called the Word, who was God, is God. And he was in the beginning, whoever he is. All things came into being through him. So everything that's here is here through this person. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Nothing. Nothing is here apart from him, whoever him is. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. We're talking about the light. Who is this light? The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And isn't that the truth? Okay, so verse 14 now is going to answer the question of who this thing, this person is that we're talking about, verses 1 through 5. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. Now I'm going to take you back up again. We're going to look at it again. Verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Skip to verse 14. Who is the Word? He became flesh. Well, it says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who, who became flesh and dwelt among us? Jesus. Emmanuel. God with us. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Creator. Nothing that came into being came into being without Him. He 
He's the Creator God. It goes back to our Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's God. It says He's God right here. And Jesus claimed to be God. He claimed to be the Son of God. He was either a lunatic or a liar or he was God. That is a question that all of us, every human being is going to have to answer. Who is Jesus? Was he a lunatic? Was he a liar? If he wasn't either one of those, then he, he is God. And do you know how come I believe it? Because he came back to life. We're getting ready to celebrate the resurrection. Easter Sunday is something I grew up dressing up in my little lace and wearing my little bonnets and I didn't know what that was all about. But man, once I came to know the Lord, Easter took on a whole different meaning. That resurrection proves that Jesus is who he said he is. Did you hear that, Becky? Mm -hmm. That proves it. Mm -hmm. That's how we know. Yeah. If he did not raise from the dead, then we wouldn't have to believe a word he said. But people saw him with their eyes. That's what they love about First John. We saw him with our eyes. And they watched him go up. And they touched him. Thomas, you know, he touched him. He was alive bodily. And that's going to happen for us too. That is what Easter is all about. And that's why we can believe every word that Jesus spoke. He is God. And he said he'll come again. He will come again. He says that we're going to be reunited with our loved ones in heaven. We will be. We can believe it. Because he is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes! <laughs> Let's do that again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, I have goosebumps. That is what fellowship is. That is our sweet fellowship. We can say that. We can speak those words together at a table and just find such joy in that. In acknowledging that our God is a God who is alive and who can be trusted in everything he says. Good stuff here. Mm -hmm.